faster from the three of you than I ever would have, mm -hmm. you know, by, by going there for a week or two. You know what I mean? I think I mean, the thing I, is, if you came here as well, if you came here, you'd be you'd be blatantly American. In you know what I mean? So people may act differently towards you. Do you, you know what I mean? It, it wouldn't. It maybe not. Wouldn't be natural. Yes, but, but, it wouldn't necessarily be the real experience. Yeah. yeah. Just no, I I I went to London two years ago. I think 2011, and I never really got to interact with that many people because I was at a hotel doing an event. Well, but, yeah, and I, yeah, I get that, Kim, and I think that even if you went there for pleasure, it would, I mean, it's a different thing, right? I mean, right? Yeah, Doesn't it's they? different. I did get to tour, you know. Yeah, uh, it depends where you are I, as well, I got though, to, because you, in London, you'd, you'd be lucky, to, we'd be lucky to interact with that mm, many people. It's, it's very much thing, a, a hell for leather sort of city and everybody are, ignores each other, yeah. Not, not, not to promote any stereotype that in England um, many people are anti-American because most people aren't. Most people are just don't care. No, that's for it's just, just, just like everybody else, really. We just <laughs> however, however, yeah. however, in England, you know, we've we've had the the largest uh, uh, empire known to man. We've had all that history and. Some of us are proud of it. <laughs> Some of us aren't. But there's um, there is a little bit of truth to the assertion that when you come over from the states, to claim to be Canadian. What? Crazy what? Come over from the Canadian. states, claim to be Canadian. Why? Claim oh, to claiming be to be Canadian. No, then... he said claim to be. Oh. Yes. So that'd be a little when... difficult for me. Yes. Yeah, so right. There are black Canadians. What are yes. you talking about? I know there are black Canadians, Maria. I get that. Well, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I understand that there are some black people in Canada. There are quite a bit, actually. Uh, sure, yes. Not of my kind. Okay, so I this is the discussion that Tony was talking about. What are you talking about? With my accent and everything, I do not sound like I'm Canadian. Oh, we, 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 most of the time, most we can't tell one way. accent from another, so That's don't worry great. about that. <laughs> See, you see what just happened between Tony and Maria? Uh -huh. That's what Tony was talking about. Yeah, see, because you know, the, like, no. note, note that there was like a little bit of a raised voice, the There's eyebrows, the look. We don't. Well, I respectfully disagree. No. <laughs> <laughs> that to, you, we saw the Tony look. Mm -hmm. We saw the Tony look. <laughs> I, I could not pass myself off as a Canadian. Now, I might be able to pass myself off as a lot of things. Could we talk about the bombers for, for a minute? Why? Go for it. Because I was really bothered this weekend and yesterday about these bombers who immigrated to our country. I am patriotic when I say our country. And that if they were so unhappy, if he was so unhappy, he's not formerly allegedly affiliated with an Al-Qaeda or terrorist group, seemed to be very unhappy with our country just from being here, you know, a short amount of time. Why did he leave? Why did he have well, to feel all, like he, he needed to first, blow first, people up? First Why? Of all, he was here for a long period of time. He was We're sick. on. We're on. Yeah. We're he on, was, Maria. Hi. He was, he was, um, he was, six, yes. the older one was 16 when he came here and he was uh -huh. here for 10 years. The younger one um, was 10 when he came here. Do we know why? He was nine. But that's Do we know why yet? Has he given a reason? No. No, we don't know yet. So but how do we know? I mean, we don't. The, the thing is, you can't. You can't say. I mean, he did the wrong thing. But I mean, he could be pissed off with the country for. It could be a valid reason why he's pissed off. But the action he took was. You see, what not, if it was unacceptable. Until, well, until until we know the reason, exactly. We that's, don't know yeah. Well, we're piecing why. together the pieces of the puzzle. But can I just say this? And what? <laughs> You know, yeah. if, if I wanted to be bitter and pissed off about a lot of things, I could have been when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. If you get my yes. drift. Yeah, no, I get yes. your drift. Teenagers. <laughs> okay, I, you know, given where I grew up and how I grew up and the circumstances yeah. under which I grew yeah. up, I could have been pissed about a lot of things. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. I was never inclined to go and blow things and people up. Thank you. Exactly. No, 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 I'm not saying, just, just to make it clear, I'm not saying that that is, a, the, the bomb thing was ridiculous. That's, it's, it's going too far, but you can't say, I mean, it, it's always, it, I mean, it's, I suppose it's a form of protest. That, that's what it's doing. Rather than just leaving, it's protesting. Yeah, but it he's protesting 
the country. Like there are again. Not the, the bomb. Forget about the bomb if you can. I don't. I don't mean that. I'm not trying to just imagine rather than blowing blowing a bomb up. Imagine he went with a banner and, and started protesting. Imagine that. Okay. Now people do that for a reason. Um, and rather than just getting up and leaving, they'll stand the ground and fight for a cause they think is uh, because we, we don't know why he's done it yet. That's the thing. I'm not. I'm not sticking up for the guy. No, I know that. But the pieces right. of the puzzle are that so far, Tony, do we not but, know but, but, all of his tweets, all of his YouTube comments, yeah, it, his trip over? I'm all, talking about the older brother. They all seem to point to the injustices of America. But I'm, my my point is, well. We, you know, there are any number of us who can claim that we have suffered injustices. Yes, yeah. there are. I, I agree from with individual you. Individual companies or a race, perhaps. Or yeah, I don't think it was necessarily. Country. In, in okay, let, let, let me just let me just put it this way: if it does become proven what what is currently likely, the, the most likely speculation does prove to be true, that the older brother initiated all of this, instigated all of this, even brought his younger brother on board because he was dissatisfied with America, then I agree with Maria. He should have left. What's the point of wanting to, on one hand, from one side of your face saying, I want to box and I want to box for the US Olympic team and I want to fight for USA. Right. And then on the other side of your face, you're planning to do these heinous, unforgivable acts. It mm -hmm. makes no sense. It, it is a sense. psychotic break. Psychotic I think the, break. the awful truth is insane. that America is no longer safe. And, you know, Bali got bombed that time by uh, other factions going in and blowing hell out of the club. Uh, you know, it's, there's different places that are systematically being bombed from time to time. America's got away with it an awful lot because they were great with the security, but all of a sudden things are getting through. And it just seems that uh, now nowhere is safe. Well, and, and, and the fact of the matter is, Justin, it's interesting. You bring up a very, uh, you bring up a very interesting point. Um, no, America is no longer exempt. Hmm. Uh, I, I prefer to think of it more as, as, as it not being any longer exempt so much as no longer being safe. Yeah. Overall, we're still very a very safe country when you consider what even countries like, like England and France and mm -hmm. some of the other countries over in Europe have gone through with, with people who have infiltrate, infiltrated their ranks and, yeah. and terrorists who live in their countries, their countries, in your countries, we still are relatively safe. In fact, we are probably uh, much more endangered by our own citizens. Well, in many ways, yes. I mean, point. no, I don't mean that way. I don't mean committing. I mean those kinds of terrorist acts. Like that immigrate. Uh, I mean just people running around in gangs shooting people. Yeah, I mean not just not just gang violence, but also uh, things like Newtown. That happens a lot, Maria. Yeah, but it, they kill their own kind, not just random. No, they don't. Citizens. No, that's not true. We report when? every day about babies being shot and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, because they're babies of the gangbangers. No, they're not. There are not no 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 innocent people. I, don't, I think it's not newsworthy anymore, so we don't see it as much here. Oh, in Chicago! Oh my God! In Chicago, do you know how many innocent people are being killed in Chicago every yeah, but day? They live. They do. They, they live, live there, in the neighborhood. They, yeah, they live Maria, there. It's, it's Maria, a it's a part live. of their life. Yes. In in some live. areas around the country, it's a part of your life to live. You live there. Does that and mean you, you hear the gunshots? You hear the. You hear the gunshots, you hear the police sirens all the time because it becomes a part of life. But that doesn't mean that it has to be. Let me just hold on. For those people, it is a lot scarier than thinking about some guy's going to randomly blow up. Yes. Okay, Tony, two points. Two points. One for Maria. And Maria, you say that you know it's their people, they're used to it. Let me tell you no, a story. I'm not saying they're used to it. I'm saying that what I've heard is that these babies who get innocently killed, not, God, I, they are either relatives of the people they were thought they were that's, targeting. Okay. No, that's not no, true, Maria. No, no, that's, let me, that's, hold, that's, on, hold on, Tony, Tony, relax, relax, breathe. Now, Maria, let me tell you a story. A friend of mine was at university with another friend of mine, but they both went to the same university. They were both doing the same kind of course. 
he went to a club one night. Uh, a, a young black guy uh, in no, England. Right. Yes. He got shot in the head. Not for mistaken identity. It's Terrible. just a bullet missed. Yeah. And this is not a country where guns are common. Yeah. So these things happen. And they happen all over the world. And the second thing is, I remember the days of the IRA. <laughs> I mean, I no. was on an no. underground train going underneath Liverpool Street when the bomb blew up at NatWest. Yeah. At the NatWest yeah. Tower. I mean, I was uh, sitting at home and the whole, home, the whole apartment block shook when, um, when Brent Cross blew up. So, you know. We had the Grand Hotel on the seafront here, uh, Gart, when they bombed Thatcher, you know. Yeah. And we, we yeah. live a good five miles out from town, but you could hear it. You and I will, it. And I will give it to you. That isn't as common there in the UK as it used to be when I was in high yeah. school, in college, yeah. and I remember those days. It's not I mean, as common every anymore. Other, every but... other day there was a bombing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so, you know, I understand that. We, we've not experienced that, and we still don't experience it, Experience that. And that's why it's so shocking to us in America when we have these things occur, because we still are not used to it. Even, I mean, even, as, even as late as 99, I think it was, um, one of the companies I was working for, everyone in the building had to move to the, to the side of the building that was furthest from the road. Because yeah. there was a bomb threat called in on, on the building on the, the other side where, of the road. But this is where I disagree with Maria, and 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 I think you know, and and I'll, when she comes back, you know, if we want to continue this discussion, the, these kids who are who are innocently a lot of times of the innocent victims of of random gunfire in these neighborhoods are not the kids of gangbangers. No, they're, not always. They're, 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 most of the time, they're not. They're just, they just happen to be outside playing or or, yes, true. or or they happen to be sitting in their living rooms watching television. I mean, these are not the kids of gangbangers. They're just no. the victims, uh, innocent victims I mean, of, ran I, of I random up, of gunfire. Yeah, I because when you, when you shoot a gun, just because you're shooting at a target doesn't necessarily mean that's where that <laughs> bullet is going to go. Yeah, exactly. Not everyone is a sharpshooter. Most of them are you know, they're right. not that good. I mean, you know, moving target and a moving car, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, to be honest with you, you know, this country is still, you know, probably much more um, endangered by by the, these crazy people out there, you know, with, mm. with, with, with their guns running around shooting people at random because they're wearing the wrong color or... Mm -hmm. uh, or you know because uh, you know they live on the wrong side of the tracks, mm -hmm. or you know they live in the wrong neighborhood, or I think there's a lot more of that going on in our urban. Uh, oh, definitely, there 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 there've, there've been more um, people killed by uh, just mass shootings like Newtown, as as opposed to in Afghanistan or Pakistan or uh, yeah. in Iraq, where you know ter terroristic. Acts are are commonplace. Yeah, I mean those that over there, these things are common because, of, because well, for many reasons. I'm not going to go into them right now. Right, right, right. It'll be right. a very long discussion. But yes, it is. I mean, when we amplify one threat in exclusion of all others, yeah, we make it easier for the others to flourish. Mm -hmm. But think about what we did. <laughs> think about what we did. And not that I... And why did that make you laugh, Kim? I'm sorry. I'm laughing at Maria. I was... I'm sorry. <laughs> Maria just went off on a tangent. She's supposed to be talking about the weather. She's talking about meeting guys while you're getting your nails done. And uh, what is his name? What's the guy that's on the desk? Steve. Steve says, Maria, did we ask you about your life story? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So carry on, Tony. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm I mean, not. I mean, I, I understand that we, we may be talking apples and oranges. I get it. So I don't want anyone sending me nasty notes since we're, uh, you know, broadcasting by. Like, hey, you're talking apples and oranges. I know I'm talking apples and oranges. But yes. mm -hmm. that being said, when was the last time we shut down a city to an entire city? To catch uh, some terrorist gang members who killed a bunch of people. 
together. I, do you know, well, from, from memory, I can't ever remember any cities being shut down like that. Actually, actually, I remember one. The two guys in D.C.? I, I, I remember, remember uh, like a, I think the uncle and the nephew. But I don't think we shut down the whole metropolitan area. the whole city, though. We yeah, didn't shut down, they shut down Boston. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They had to. You know why? The, the, well, no, and, and I don't, oh, no, I don't disagree with what mm. they did, Kim. See, and that's the thing I want to make very clear. I think they did what they needed to do in order to bring about the result that mm -hmm. that occurred. Well, I had to for the safety of everybody else anyway. Yeah, I understand that. But, but there was one guy out there they were looking for, and they shut down that whole, they shut down that mm -hmm. entire city. And when was the last time Chicago was shut down because, you, you know, you had 20 people killed overnight by someone running well, it, around. Well, it was, a, I think it, it all boiled down to, it was more of an attack on, it was more of a attack on the nation and not so, not so much like one-to-one -one gang violence. It was more of a statement against the, the nation, so therefore they felt that they had to go through more, much more to capture this guy. What are you talking about now? The bombers? We're, yeah, we're still talking about Sorry. it. I, I'm just I saying. Can I, 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 can I just say real quick, Maria? I love your story about the nails. <laughs> you were not telling your life story. We have a Hi. guest, so I'm leaving. Oh, Kurt yeah. Warner's here. Oh, my gosh. That was a surprise. Shock because I think I'm going to go check and see if he's here. He's here. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. I love this color. It's fabulous. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet nice you, Lynn. Lynn. Yeah, this is Tony. Did you meet yes, Tony McHugh? Yes, well, we met before. Yes. Oh, you have met before. Yes. Fantastic. Um, okay, so did Shaka tell you a little bit about our hangout? A little bit, yeah. We get to hang out with these fine people from all, all right. over the world. And not only that, it's broadcast live on our YouTube channel, so anyone okay. for the YouTube channel could be watching. So oh, cool. It's very casual awesome. and very informal. Sounds good. Oh, he is? Okay. Right. Hey, you guys, we've got Kurt Warner joining us for just a little bit before he joins the rest of the gang on the set of Good Day LA. And uh, Kurt's going to be talking about his new show called The Moment. It's on USA. Kurt, really quickly, I want to just introduce you to Ayub. He's in England. Right. Joe Hi is in uh, Las Vegas. Hello. We've got Justin yes. in uh, Brighton in England as well. Okay. Kim is in Hi. Kansas City. And Hello. Kurt in the UK also. And All right. Hello, everybody. YouTubers. Hello, world. If you Morning. have a quick question, send it to me or anyone in the Hangout. So let's start with the show, The Moment. Okay. Um, this is a show, I think, about second chances exactly. at your dream, exactly. right? Exactly. That's the, the premise is giving people second chances at their dreams. And it's individuals that at one point in time were chasing their dream. Mm -hmm. uh, and then life got in the way. You know, life uh, threw them a curveball. I know. It took them, took them down a path that was a little bit unexpected for them. And so mm -hmm. they had to choose to step away from their dream. And then as the host, I get to come back in and mm -hmm. offer them a second chance. And from there, it's kind of like I'd liken it to a Rocky movie. If you guys don't know yeah. Kurt Warner, I mean, you really should. Kurt Warner is an mm -hmm. American football player, um, very famous for your own, really, your own version of your second chance, which right. was a chance to play for the NFL. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of details in there, but you, we equate your story, or at least associate you with working at the high V grocery yep, store. Exactly, yeah. You were a walk-on. Um, yep. uh, yeah, you know, I sat on the bench for four years in college yeah. and then got cut from my first NFL team and then, and then worked boom. in the grocery store and played arena football and played over in Europe. Um, and then finally got my second chance when I was 27 to play in the NFL. And at so 27, yes. which is, I know is very young. but mm. in, so, so yeah. But I mean, so it's very much the reason that I'm the host of the show is because yeah. I get a chance to share my story and my experience with those on the show to encourage mm -hmm. them and, and maybe teach them, you know, help mm -hmm. them avoid making some of the same mistakes I make. I definitely want to talk a little bit more about that. If you guys have a question for Kurt, I know, Kim, you want to say hello. <laughs> You're a big <laughs> fan. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I am a big fan. I used to live in St. Louis. Okay. And, yes, I cried when you left. <laughs> 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 and my question to you, uh, with your, your background, your story of your second chance, are there a specific type of people that you're looking for to give a second chance to? You or, know, and, and do you have like a follow-up program after you give them that second chance? Um, you know, we don't have a specific kind of person. You know, obviously the, the point of the show or the premise of the show is based on people that were chasing their dream and then life took them away from that. And so people that's part of it. You, right? Yes, you have to be nominated by, you can't nominate yourself, you have to be nominated by a family member or a friend. Um, but that's where it starts, is people that were chasing their dream and then they have some kind of story that took them away from their dream. So that's where it starts. Um, but, you know, if you watch the show, I mean, we have people that 
want to be sailors, football coaches, NASCAR drivers, choreographers, diplomatic chefs, costume designers. So it's really across the board as far as, um, you know, the fields that they want to go into. And so there's no set person that, that we're looking for. Uh, we're trying to, to couple the story with the skill and then obviously the personality to be able to, to get on television and, uh, and project what we need from that standpoint. But you put those three things together and um, it's really been a fun, powerful show. And as far as follow-up, I mean, uh, we continue to, to follow up you know, the, the mentors and people that they meet along the way. have followed up with a lot of the individuals on the show. We also have a program for those audience members that watch it uh, on usanetwork.com. If you go to the My Moment page, we actually have a program there where people that want to chase their dream that don't get the opportunity to be on the show can kind of go through a four-step process where you can get hooked up with mentors. You can eventually... Um, get in touch with companies, organizations that are hiring in that field. And so we're hoping to, to have a huge outreach, not just the individuals on the show, but a program that people watching at home that get inspired and encouraged can jump on the website and hopefully take the steps that they need to, to follow their dream as well. I'd imagine there will be a lot of people, especially in this time of our economy where, where so many people are looking for a job right. even. Justin, did you have a question too? Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering, because it's such a wide uh, and varied demographic of second chances with the different things that you were just listing that different people are possibly involved with, what sort of team have you got uh, behind the show helping out? Because that's that's not an easy thing to do, is it? No, it's not easy at all. Do you have like race car drivers? I mean, like you we, said. Well, um... what happens is we have, um, you know, as we seek out the different opportunities and the mm -hmm. different people nominated and what they want to do, we reach out because at the end of every episode, we have the ultimate job interview waiting for them. And so we actually, mm -hmm. our NASCAR driver had an opportunity with RCR Racing, which is Richard Childress Racing, which is one of the biggest uh, NASCAR teams uh, that's out there. And so. We reach out to different organizations and make sure that we have uh, that kind of background. We have an, an opportunity waiting for them at the end. And then we also find mentors along the way. So each of the individuals have a mentor that is at a very high level in that particular field. And so we have ways for them to, to build contacts, to talk with people that are obviously in the field. And then hopefully at the end of the episode, they get an opportunity to chase their dream by getting a job. Um, you know, that's exactly what they want to do. Are you? Are you? Go ahead. Well, I want to talk a bit more about your own uh, second chance, Kurt. Uh, when you were allocated to uh, Amsterdam to play, how did that make you feel? What was your? What was going through your mind when you heard that news? You know, it was. Um, it was a. It was a process for me because you know when I was allocated, I was 27 years old. I had actually just gotten married three months before that. We just found out we were pregnant with our first child together. Um, but I also knew that if I was going to get back to the NFL, it was going to be through, because I was playing arena football, it was going to be through getting back on the big field. And the only real opportunity to do that was in Europe. And so uh, it was kind of, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a tough situation because I didn't want to leave my wife and my family, but I knew that this was my last chance and I had to do it. So I really enjoyed my experience over there. It obviously helped me to, 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 to get to the NFL and get a foot in the door because they were able to see me. But it was a difficult spot, you know, and I think it's one thing you find out about chasing your dreams is there are sacrifices that have to be made, not just by you, but usually by those close to you, your family, your wife, uh, your husband. And so uh, very, very grateful that my family was willing to make those sacrifices and that I was able to, you know, to take that opportunity because it, it paid huge dividends in the long run. And I think that's one of the things you find out is you'll see it on the show a lot. Is it that wrestling match between the sacrifices in the short term for the benefits long term? And are people willing to uh, to come to grips with that and, and make that choice? You guys, you and your wife, you speak of your wife, um, have one of the strongest, I think, relationships and inspiring stories. Well, thank you. And to be together for as long as you have. Yeah. What do you attribute that to, you think? I mean, the strength that you have together, yeah. it's really just Well, I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing is that we had somebody tell us very early on is regardless of what you do, make time for each other. Yeah. And, you know, having we have seven children, yeah, uh, you know, playing in the NFL, <laughs> and doing the different things that I'm doing now. You know, people are always saying, well, you're busier now than you've ever been. And yeah. it's, it's probably true, but it's stuff that I want to do. 
And in between all this stuff, I, I make sure that there's time for us. Even even with my kids, you know, there's times where I have to tell my kids, you know, your mom's my first priority. Mm. So we're going to go away for two days or we're going to go spend the night in a hotel or we're going to go have date night. And so really to establish that very early that mm -hmm. she's priority number one yeah. and that she gets my undivided attention yeah. at numerous times. You know, we try to do date night every week, but we make sure that we get away together so we can work on that part of it. I, yeah. I think that's the first it's thing to go is when you have yeah. kids and you have jobs, the first mm -hmm. thing to go is focusing and spending time just with your spouse. Yes. And so that was something that somebody told us very early and we've taken that to heart. And so we, we make sure every year we take some vacations together. We spend time, just the two of us. And I think that's paid huge dividends. That is so wonderful. And we forget, you know, as married yep. people with yeah. kids, I forget. So thank yeah, you. We, we all thank do, you I for think. the reminder. Yeah. Um, do you guys have other questions? I know that the show on USA um, is on what, what night? It, it airs Thursday nights. Thursday at, nights. Yeah, 10 Eastern. For yeah, us, I'm not. I'm not sure. Is it, do we even have it in in the UK? Probably not, but probably online. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, definitely go to uh, to USA.com and you can find the episodes online as well. And how's I retirement? Have... How's retirement? Retirement has been awesome. Um, awesome. You know, because it's well, you're busy. It's less well, the balance between. I still get to do a lot of great things. I'm working, obviously, on the NFL Network, covering mm -hmm. football, um, doing the show for USA. And then I get to spend a lot of time watching my kids grow up and, and enjoying what they're doing and be, being at home uh, as much as I possibly can. And so it's really a great balance of still getting to do great things that I want to, mm -hmm. but also getting to focus on the family as well. That is so wonderful. I think I have time for maybe one Kempton question. Kim, did you have one last uh, thought or well, question? I just wanted to know uh, if you're on Twitter. Yes. I am on Twitter. Yes, yes. Uh, try to stay active on Twitter. My my Twitter handle is Kurt Thirteen Warner. Uh, okay. So Twitter or Facebook. So you can hit me up. I not on Facebook as much as Twitter. So uh, but I do like <laughs> to respond and, and and interact a little bit. So, uh, so are, you, sure you are, are your kids on social media? Have you had this talk with them about all of that stuff? Yeah, we you know we have to talk about it all the time. Yeah. I mean now with the Instagrams and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Videos oh, that we have out yes, there in the YouTube. Facebooks, and mm -hmm. you know, and even the fact yeah. that you know I've got a twelve-year-old daughter who's yes. gotten some drama, you know, girl <laughs> drama at school, you know, and they'll they'll make up a you know Facebook page or they'll make mm -hmm. up an Instagram that's a fake Instagram oh. just to be mean to someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's a whole bunch of things that can go on because especially now you don't have to put your name to it. Mm -hmm. You can go create it. Yeah. Nobody has any idea who it is, and so there's a lot of things that we have to talk to our kids about that we never dealt with growing up yeah. and so we're we're learning as we go but uh but trying to stay you know in front of that so it doesn't become an issue that's incredible Kurt, it's such a pleasure to meet you well, really nice i've been a too. big fan too you guys an amazing football player and now uh, on a new show amongst many other things <laughs> um called the moment on the usa network will you take a photo with us before well, you go? i sure will here's the camera right, All right. here oh i didn't put my camera right. hold on let me put that out right now there it is okay ready <laughs> one two Three. Yay. All right. Thanks, all of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. Much. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to meet you. Bye. I just might get to hang out for Billy Ray. He's hot. <laughs> oh yes. I can see that you're oh, yeah. lost in the moment. You can see There's not very many men about. who can wear pink. But when you were talking about it's all about his wife and stuff like that, you were mm, ah, you were oh, just yeah, ready yeah. for that. <laughs> you could see this it. This is what I tell my husband them. all the time. Men who are happily married and speak so well about their wives are so sexy to me. That's why <laughs> men who I are I love married, my yeah. wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah I'm the exact opposite because I think happily married is an oxymoron. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rev. Rev. Nice one, Trev. Nice one, Trev. Rev. That's a bachelor at heart speaking. Bachelor I, at I heart. just like to congratulate Trev for getting the word oxymoron into a hangout. <laughs> <laughs> Happily married. No, good morning is a definitely an oxymoron in our world. No, these people are really together. Like, and and they have a wonderful fairy tale Cinderella story. Him and his wife and his career, like all of that. Just. He's awesome. And Tony, did you see his shirt? No. Uh, I could see you wearing that outfit. 
It is so, uh, so few We can see it, but Tony there, won't. They're so <laughs> They're that color. Oh, look at Aroxia taking a photo with Kurt Warner. Oh, she is a oh, so Little. she come she can come out and play with him, but she can't come out and play with us. I wanted to have evidence of her hanging out with him, but couldn't even take the time to come say oh, hi to us. So Tell her she's in trouble. A bunch of people taking photos with Kurt Warner now. He's really an American football hero. Oh, here comes um, Billy Ray Cyrus. Okay, Billy Ray Cyrus is the guy who really created the one-hit wonder, I think, called Achy Breaky Heart. Yeah. I, think, I think I got cowboy boots because of that song. Mm -hmm. Like, I got my very own, fir my first pair of cowboy boots. Um, and he had the mullet. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day. Yeah, I remember the mullet. Did you guys all have mullets? No. No. I, no, I, was only I would years. rock it now if I could. I just okay, had very I long hair. It. I had but half a mullet. You're I just had mullet. very long hair, but I didn't mollify it. Mm -hmm. I had <laughs> half of my I head had, shaved. I had a bit of a mullet. Yes, it was. I had um, half of my head shaved with the design in it, and then the other side was long. Did. Well, Go he's ahead. here about his new book. It's called The Hillbilly Heart. And, you know, he may answer a question or two about Miley, but I think he gets a little protective about, you know, her life and stuff. So, I just about him. I've got a great um, question for him, but I'm not going to I'm not going to ask it. Yeah, I, I would say let's let's see where it goes, and then. Um... I, I, I actually wanted to ask him how having a daughter Hi. in the public eye makes him feel. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I I tweeted it um at Billy Ray Cyrus. How long ago did you do that? I did it about ten minutes ago. Maybe you could retweet it. Yeah, I'll show you. There's a I'll show you a really easy way to find it once you get into your Twitter. Probably got to be right there. I would imagine you get a lot of that work on this. Yeah. The mansion? There you go. That, anyway, right. that, that's her name. Right there. Um, I'm a razor. Did you put the uh, tag? Did you put I did. The, oh, I, I thought I did. Uh, da, da, da. That was her. If you click on her name, it'll pull up all her. Um, I did. Oh, you know what? I did it with Kurt, and then I uh, let me let me do it again. So sorry. Hang on, you guys. Uh, it's no. coming um, right. She did tweet it out, but we didn't get okay. It right, so I'm yeah. sorry about that. Uh, this is the part that's you know. Okay, hang on. It should go to you now, in like in a second. That's good. Oh, we're doing our time. Yeah, 9.20. Mm -hmm. You got a couple minutes. I love it when you see celebrities. Yeah, I'm so just click it, Justin. <laughs> you shan't be disappointed. <laughs> I am. There's, there's no mullet. Oh. There's no mullet. Um, that's okay. You know what? I'll just retweet it. Um, it probably just took taking a minute. <laughs> We have to make a guys hang out later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna even click on that link because yeah, don't. If it's for the guys, <laughs> good. You don't want to. I guarantee you. I'm so offended. <laughs> <laughs> Trev, you know what? I didn't say for the guys to hang out. It's a guy hang out. Maria, we need to put the guys and hang out. <laughs> I mean, out. in, in timeout. Time what do you mean, us? I didn't post it. All of the guys. It's a salute to oh, this woman's athletic prowess. Um, yeah, um, what did I do? Huh? Oh, it's got to be a fishing photo. What, what did I do? Why are all of the guys? You're not an innocent bystander. Please, <laughs> please don't I even try that one on me. I'm an innocent bystander. <laughs> did you click on the link? I did not say anything about it. I bet he clicked on it. 
because he laughed. Go so, Lick. Mm-hmm. See? That's what I see Lick, about people. Lick, I didn't get you in trouble, did I? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a mess. What shall we do? Well, Billy Ray can hear us at the moment, so... Yeah, oh, I thought she had us him muted. Away. No, no. Oops. We don't want to scare him away. <laughs> Don't scare him away. Hold the book up, Maria. Yeah, she has Maria said, Yes, Maria said to hang on, so I'm hanging on. Excuse me. We're also we're also gonna repost this on our website. Are you? So, yeah, so we'll retweet yeah. your peeps. Okay. Now we've got a bunch of people here now. There um, they are. Yes. Let me turn them Is up. This a our little questionnaire bit in a second. folks right here. These are our vetted, we like to say they're FCC approved, um, friends of ours on Google Plus from all over the world. Oh good. Yeah. They on right now? Uh huh. Somebody said I said shit on T V. On T V? Did I say shit? <laughs> you can say that here. Mick, did I say shit on TV? <laughs> Just maybe, maybe you said shoot. Maybe. Maybe you said shoot. Kind of sounds like I was quoting it. Dolly Parton. She does say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dolly Parton. I love to bring her up. Um, good morning, you guys. We have got Billy Ray Cyrus joining us in the hangout this morning. How exciting. Um, father of Miley Cyrus. I know you recognize the name. Billy's got a new book out. It is called The Hill Billy Heart. And uh, you've got to put on your glasses there, Justin. It's I'm putting on my glasses. I can't see a thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I can see y'all and read these questions. See, you're rough. No, no, no. You, we don't. Uh, it's not like a text question. They're going to ask Oh, I'm you. just reading all that stuff. Oh, this is all busyness for my, my computer. Ah, yeah, that's better not. anyway. A rock star. Now, are those prescription glasses? Yeah, I can oh, see better. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, the light is so bright. Okay. Well, let me introduce you to everybody here, Billy Ray. Do people call you Billy Ray or Billy? Billy Ray's fine, or Billy, Billy or, or Billy. BR, or Bill, or Cyrus, or now I'm here, Billy. <laughs> Billy will answer to that. <laughs> Um, let me quickly introduce you to everybody here. We've got Trev, who's hanging out with us from Yorkshire. He's in the UK this morning. Hello. Nick is in Dallas, Texas. Kim is in Kansas City. Hello. Justin is in Brighton. He's also in the UK. Right on. Um, Joe is in Las Vegas. And we've got Ayub, who's in Leicester, also in England. And we okay. actually have a bunch of people now joining us watching on air. So, hey, you guys, uh, if you have a question or a comment for Billy Ray or Hill Billy, um, go ahead and tag me or anyone in the Hangout, and we'll get it to him for sure. Um, let's start out with this, this book, Billy Ray, about the Hill Billy heart. What is a Hill Billy exactly? Uh, it's frame of mind, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because it kind of has some, it can have derogatory meaning if you say it a certain way. I did a, a documentary context. for the History Channel. Yeah. Um, and what kind of, it was the fact and fiction of what is a hillbilly. Because mm -hmm. I'm from Eastern Kentucky, I've called myself a hillbilly my whole life, so I kind of wanted to know mm -hmm. where exactly, where'd that come from? And really, what I found out was it's just a state of mind. And it is what you make it. There's no derogatory. I'm from Hawaii, and, and mm -hmm. we have kind of a hillbilly um, frame of mind in Hawaii. We're yeah. about, yeah, we got a lot of country music in Hawaii. We have the Paniolos and Cowboys mm -hmm. in Hawaii. So we get a lot of our influence in music in country, from country music. Mm -hmm. So I know our frame of mind is relax, hang loose, and hang you know, loose. kind of. The hang loose, Take, chill. Yeah, hang loose, right, chill. Man. So I'm imagining that that's kind of a hillbilly way too. Right? You got it exactly right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So what can we expect in this book? It's um, it's your kind of memoir, or what's in here? What can we find out about you in here? A the bit. truth. It's a story of my life. It is a memoir, and um, and um, you know, it's um, starts at 1961. Which sounds so long ago, trust me. No, 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 I'm yeah. not much farther. It's a long time ago. It starts a long time ago. And goes 
Once Ooh, upon a time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, you guys have some questions, I know. So I will go to you. If you have one, just get my attention. And uh, I'll definitely... I have one. You do have one already? Okay, go ahead, Kim. Yes. In reading your book, what is some of the takeaways that you want us to have uh, in learning about you in life? Well, I'm hoping that there's something you can learn from my life that maybe you can apply on your own to help you reach your goals and your dreams. Um, you'll read through the book that I've failed many, many more times than I succeeded, and I've made probably more mistakes than things I did right. But if you can learn by my mistakes and possibly not have to put yourself through the process of making the mistakes I made, then you're a step up. If you look at a couple of the things that I did right, as in persistence and faith and setting goals and believing that it takes hard work to reach your dreams, you know, and um, and that life is a series of adjustments. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a journey, and it's never going to be perfect, and you're never going to be perfect. And accepting that and saying, okay, I deal with, you know, I'll take the good things and and try to adjust the bad. Now, did you grow up? Because I do. I shared the story with with everybody here about achy breaky heart and what a big hit that song was. And mm -hmm. I think I went out and got some cowboy boots because I wanted to do the dance. You know, there was a dance associated with achy breaky heart. Um, but did you, because you went into acting, you know, after that, and so where was, where was your state of mind at that point? Did you want to continue pursuing the country music? Did you want to go into acting? Like, where did the roads fork for you? You know, for me, I, I still love both. Mm -hmm. I still try to, I blend them both together. I love acting. I love film. I just recently finished uh, a run on Broadway as mm -hmm. Billy Flynn in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I just I have a brand new album out uh, called "Change My Mind," which mm -hmm. features the song "Here Billy Hart." I like to find, you know, the projects that I do. I try to find things that combine both my loves, acting and making music. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Joe. Yes, go ahead. How do, how do you feel about the um, sometimes when the paparazzis and everybody's kind of just infiltrating your life when there's no respect when it, when they cross the boundary? How do, how does that affect you? Hey, you know, if you're in a business where I guess at some point it sells magazines. And well, I mean, stuff, if you, you know. if you, if you're gonna be famous, then you know you I guess at some point. The paparazzi, that's just part of it, you know, they, they they do what they do and, you know, sometimes it's a bummer, but what are you going to do? I mean, if you've worked really hard to get to a spot, you know, um, probably if no one cares, then you're probably not doing much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, somewhere uh, mm -hmm. Chris Christopherson told me years ago, you know, the turkey with the longest next, the one everybody's shooting at. If nobody's mm. shooting at you, you probably ain't doing mm -hmm. that. Um, is there a, a chapter on this book about your family? And I ask specifically about your daughter, Miley, because she's mm. such a huge superstar. Mm. And I know that you were an integral part of her career mm. growing up. She wanted to have her show, I think, uh, um, Hannah Montana, mm. yes? Um, did you write a chapter on that, that part of the book? There's quite a bit about Miley in this book. Um, Miley is and always will be a big part of my life and uh, you know she started singing from the time she could talk she started singing and getting out on stage with me and being around people like Carl Perkins mm -hmm. and oh, Dolly Parton and you know from Waylon to George Jones and mm -hmm. Ed King from Leonard Skinner. She always just loved being around um, the singers and songwriters and the real the real people that brought that realism to their music and that's I think a whole lot what has rubbed off on Miley is she's a true artist and she she loves making music she loves being an actress and um, I, I'm sure you talk to her about the heartbreak too that's associated with this industry and you know, the negative attention um, and you have other children too. Are they interested in this business at all too, or is it just Miley? And they all love certain aspects of singing, songwriting, um, acting. 
uh, my youngest daughter loves to ride horses. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I love it that that's what she loves. You know, yeah. it's um, it's a, it's about doing in life what you're passionate about, what makes you happy. Um, uh, life's too short, you know, not to uh, be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, did you have a question? Yeah, I know that uh, Billy Ray, you uh, played Billy Flynn on Broadway last year. How was that experience for you? It was great. Thank you for asking. Um, I wanted to uh, learn and immerse myself in the theater. And, you know, a lot of the great actors that I worked with all had that theatrical training. And um, I wanted to go in there and see firsthand and feel firsthand what I could absorb from that stage, you know. And it was a great experience. I loved it. So you, singer, songwriter, author, is there something else on your list that, that you want to tick off? You know, I, right now I'm, I, I'm at a spot in my life where I'm very comfortable doing what I do. I, I love the fact that this book represents persistence and a dream. It's dedicated to dreamers. I'm, I'm just looking for purpose in my life to share with others and possibly to learn something about myself through this journey you know, mm -hmm. standing at a crossroads, you know, for the next chapter of my own life. Um, I've written a lot of songs for a new album that I'm going to start recording immediately. Uh, I start a new movie first week of May, mm -hmm. uh, being filmed in Nashville, and um, <coughs> it's called Like a Country Song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's why I look a little bit different today. I start in a week and a half, so I'm just grooming myself for that role, and, and um I'm anxious to uh, go get started on that, and um, being out here, you know, with Hibbly Heart, and again, it's the story of my life. You get one one chance to tell it, and this is it. Uh, Justin, did you have a question? Oh. No, it's just going to touch on the the Billy Fling part again, really, because it's so different from standing up and doing concerts. Obviously, it's uh, it's the movements and choreography of uh, Bob Fosse as well so things like the fan dance where you're right in the middle of it and things like that but that uh, was quite so removed from what you did how easy was it to adjust to all that uh, Justin that's a, that, that's a good question and you're right it, it is a different ball game you know it is an adjustment um, interestingly uh, when I went to see Chicago it was actually um, from London uh, to do Chicago in London and then when I was there, they said, well, why don't you start here in Broadway and then go to London? So um, that's one of the things people are kicking around right now. I'd love to. Uh, Bob Fosse, uh, I fell in love with the whole Bob Fosse experience of dance, of song. And quite frankly, that became my passion of Bob Fosse and this wonderful creation and so many things of a legacy and style that was all his own. I'm the biggest Bob Fosse fan in the world now. Mm -hmm. If opportunities come up, I'd love nothing more than to be a part of bringing it to London, where it was actually intended that when I went to see the show, it was actually to go do Chicago in London. Speaking of London, um, not too far from London, Ayub, yes, go ahead. Well, my question is, when you started out in the industry, um, what was your dream at the time? What was your main goal, and do you think you've achieved it? My goal and dream was to make music, um, music that would be heard around the world, and I prayed that God would give me the wisdom and the vision to use my music and my life to represent His light and His love. That's still what I'm. That's what I'm doing. So to answer your question, I feel like I'm right on target for the reason I bought a guitar and started a band, and I'm right now right in the middle of it. This is this is that moment. This is the moment of. What am I going to do with the blessings that, that God has given me? And I choose to, um, you know, to, to try to represent His light and His love. That being said, perhaps, perhaps my, my mission on this is just saying that, hey, I'm a man that's made a lot of mistakes. I'm a very imperfect human being. Um, that's is, kind of where I come at from this is maybe, you know, if you can learn by some of the mistakes I've made then and know that no one is perfect. Life for all of us, it's a journey, and you take step by steps, and you do the best you can, you know. My last question is talking about mistakes, and, and I know you wouldn't be who you are today without making the decisions you've made, but 
if you could go back and redo like a take two on a part of your life, mm. what would you do? Oh, well, I regret the part in the book where I stole a um, 3D Jesus um, for uh, my man. It was terrible. I, 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 I pray every day for forgiveness for that. And um, again, I now I use that moment, you know, to say, okay, well, thank goodness Jesus lived and died for sinners like me because I did a bad thing. I stole a 3D Jesus and then. Um, I accidentally caught my papal's house on fire one time. Those well, two things, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. So those two things, whew, when I read them, that that's, mm -hmm. was part of the book. I knew that it was bad, and I'd done some bad stuff. But when I wrote it down and could read it, I actually mm. thought about, mm. well, maybe I shouldn't put that in there. But the whole point of the book was to tell the story of my life, mm -hmm. and this is the truth. And like the songs that I write. They ain't always pretty, but they're the truth. Well, I, have, I really appreciate you talking with us, um, Billy. This is the new book. It is called Hillbilly Heart with uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. Will you take a quick photo with us yeah. before you go? Okay, great. Here's the camera right here. Okay. Wait, wait. What? Can you hold the book up? I sure will. Okay, hold on, hold on. One, two, three. Yay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping by. You're welcome. You're just so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really has the Waylon Jennings vibe going on with the sunglasses, the thick beard, and all that. It looks, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Oh, thank you. I love it that he reads my tweets. I'm going to start following him. <laughs> he does actually do his own tweeting. Wow. Yeah. Mina Savari uh, tweeted me back after uh, I oh, nice. gave her a screenshot of a show. She tweeted me back twice. Cool. That is, see, that's fabulous. That's another thing about and She said, stop following me. She stop following me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know for me, like, there are people who tweet me, and there are people that tweet me and get a response from me. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's random, but sometimes it's because I've met them, like at the grocery store or you know, whatever, but this is another way that you have this connection, which I love, and I, you guys all know the story. Well, I'm, always, I'm, always, I'm always, it always makes my day when Maria mentions me in Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go because I have to go start my go. three and a half hour training. <laughs> yeah, three and a half hours. Uh, fun. Uh, yeah, you guys have fun. See you tomorrow. See you. Oh, do you know who's on tomorrow? I don't. I'm sorry. Us. Let me let me look and see if that calendar. Sometimes the calendar is up, and sometimes the calendar. Nope, it's not up. There. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. No problem. You guys have fun. See you later. Bye. See you. Um, he was a cool cat. He was a mm. uh, cool cat. <laughs> he was kind of cool. Yeah. There's some surprising answers, actually. A few things that you said that I wasn't expecting uh, to hear yeah. from him. You know what? I, I was surprised, too. I didn't think. And I didn't really want to go into Miley because I've heard him in past interviews when someone's mm. asked him about Miley. And so it's not his first choice to talk well, about. I was, my, my initial question for him was going to be similar to what you asked, um, Maria. That's why I didn't ask it. Mm. Um, I was going to try to get him to talk about how he feels about some of the attention that Miley gets. Right. Um, he sort of answered him. it. Yeah, and yeah. he sort of answered it anyway. Sort of so. It, so that's yeah. why I asked the other He's question. probably tired of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can well, imagine. Part of it. Yeah, because he is, and I, in fact, I think the, there was one time he was on the set here years ago, and I think someone made an offhanded comment, which I don't think she meant to, but something, like, do you remember when, I won't name any names of the anchors at the time, but she said something like, oh, how does it feel living off of your daughter's money or something like that? Mm. You know? Ouch. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember that? And I, I, I couldn't believe, I don't know. I just, like, I couldn't believe it. I know, I don't know if she was joking or, but he had a completely different like he got upset, you know. Wow. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. He got asked and, that more than once on air. I mean, 
I mean, it was it was a pretty regular thing to ask him at the time, and I think he probably got pretty fed up with it. Mm-hmm. But that is so a it's, I mean, it's, it's not like one of these. It's not like one of these these parents that shove the kid through drama school because it's what they didn't they didn't have when they were a kid. And they, you know what I mean? And they've no, really not they've that. got yeah, more they time. Yeah, they were like vicariously living. Really yeah, he's made his own money, hasn't he? He's had his own success. And yeah. Own yeah, I think it's an yeah, unfair yeah. question. Fair thing to say to him. It's a big yeah. name, successful yeah. guy. Well, I know she wanted her TV show, and so I think, I think what happened was he didn't want her to be here alone by herself. They would all lived, you know. So he was part of the TV show. I don't know if you guys remember Hannah yeah. Montana. He played the dad. And so it was like wherever she went, he went. And I think he did that for other reasons. I mean, obviously he was her father, and she was underage. Mm. So, you know, it made sense that he would go wherever she went. Um, and be protective. And be protective. But people were talking because then he would be in the show he would be in the concert in the you know so that's where a lot of people were making that assumption that mm-hmm. anyway it's all good it's all good it's all did good. you see that newscaster that got fired yesterday or two days ago you guys already yes. talked about it his first day you know on what? the air okay was yes. that real or was that it's fake? real it's real it's his first day it was his first day on the job and he War. He, he, the, my, he said. He said, effing, effing gay. Yes. No, yeah. the guy. The guy oh. had like this Russian name, so it is like traduce gay. So he was oh. like, trying to. He was trying to pronounce it, and he couldn't get it. He couldn't get it out. And then they went on air, and he went, effing shit, you know, or, or whatever. And so right, then like, right. so they they fired him on that on the spot. Oh, then this might be a different one. Is it? He he was co-anchoring with an Asian lady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The same one, okay. And it was his first day. His first day. First day on the air. <laughs> first day yeah, if you go get fired, do it with style, you yeah. know. Poor guy. <laughs> well, he'll learn never to do that again. Yeah. I know. If I feel he ever gets another chance. That's but it's like, kind of thing you, that you, know, come back you should know better than that. Your microphone's going to be hot. Especially when they were right about to go on the air. It was right. like, yeah, exactly. not even five seconds. So why would you say that? That was crazy. Very crazy. Anyway. But hey. Trevor, are you going to say speaks. anything in Spanish? <laughs> I mean, you went to Spanish class last night. Are you going to say anything in Spanish? Come on, Trev. No. That's Come on, Trev. Come on. I want to hear tired. I'm really, I just got really tired. And, I, and, I, and I'll mess it all up. I've, I've mess it all up had, anyway, but especially for today. I've, I've never heard Spanish in a Yorkshire accent before. Come but on. that's the thing. I, I say it in a Yorkshire accent, and I don't like that. I, I, I hate it, actually. I want to, I wanna, but my Spanish teacher says, forget about the accent. Just just learn forget the language. Forget about the accent. Just learn the language. Exactly. Yeah, that's what she said. Just learn yeah. the accent. So from. let's have a listen. No. <laughs> no, don't put what him on the spot. What were the exercises that you learned yesterday? It's directions. It's what? Directions and oh, di- so directions. If oh, you say direction, and, like that. Yeah. What, well, like, where's the bar? Yeah. That's and that is, that, that is, that, and it's still it's bar important. as well. It's an important one. Donde is north, south, north, south, north, south, east, west, or? Yeah, yeah, excuse me, old chap, could you direct one to the toilets? That's important. Donde está, donde está baño? Oh! El baño. You did it. Okay. Where is the bathroom? Yes. Well, no, That's the one, yes. Oh, it was on the new Excuse line. me, Albin, could one direct one to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen's, wouldn't it be, surely? Hello, chap. Oh. What? Yeah. <laughs> and race One wants to powder one's no, nose. Posh people, posh people call it the cloakroom. The nice. cloakroom, yes. Direct, oh, cloak direct one to the cloakroom. Yeah. Or one wants to powder one's nose. Mm. Well, they, they, my miss, you know, that's that. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> it would be, yeah, that was going somewhere correct. completely <laughs> different. <laughs> <than Trev. laughs> to be grammatically correct, it is could one direct me, not could you direct one. One of these days I'll actually meet you, Trevor, and we'll sit down and have a drink, and I'm sure the conversation you know, the over the table will be really yeah, funny. Yeah, you guys are not, I mean, you are far from each other, but I mean, that's too far, right? Well, just in couldn't any further from me. Yeah. Uh, as far as England. Well, I could. I can try. But again, <laughs> it's not the same as, like, Joe driving over to California. No. No, no, no. no I mean, I mean, I'll be, so. be seeing how you've been in July. Um, and I know that when um, 
Oh really? Yeah, Wouldn't that be fantastic? Well, when, T- when Tiffany comes over, we'll be going to see her because you're, you'll be going to see her, won't you? Yeah, yeah. Are, are you coming up as well, Justin? Who's going to who? Huh? Tiffany Henry's coming to um, London. Oh London. yes, so. Tiffany's coming to London. So you guys are all going to meet up in London. Yeah. yeah. Same way we met oh. up in London when Daria came over. How cool! How many people ended up going to that hangout? Oh, uh, it was about. Eight or ten of us, wasn't it? I travelled the furthest, though. I'd, I'd like to... Uh, yeah, you did. Like <laughs> Apart from <laughs> Daria herself. So uh, you went to London to see um, Ayub and Daria? Yeah. Well, I went to see Daria. Oh, you went to see Daria? <laughs> <laughs> Daria was just there. And where did you guys meet up in London? Like, some pub or where? Well, I met, oh, this one in Madison. Because I, I met him at the, the, the London Eye. <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> the London Eye? That but is... Okay, but they all started right, right. chanting my name because I, I was late and, they, and it was a, there were a big queue going to London High and they all started chanting my name like that and clapping their hands and it and everyone let me through and it was like a big thing for me and I, I, yeah. They thought it, you were some celebrity that was. Yeah, yeah. we kind of we, we kind of said these are celebrities with us. I'm gonna clo- I'm gonna close the broadcast. Bye, YouTubers. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.